If you're watching this video, you already know that Alpha 5 is a great tool for building web database applications. But no matter what tool you use to build database applications, often the applications end up functioning much better than they actually look. And to be fair, people who are database developers are often not very good graphic artists. <laughs> Likewise, good graphic artists are often not very good database developers. And while Alpha 5 makes it extremely easy to build unattractive web database applications, it also makes it easy to build great-looking web applications as well. Hello, I'm Dave McCormick, and in this video we're going to look at how to put together applications that are both highly functional and highly stylized. Okay, so let's start with the challenge, and that is that in its raw form, data is usually not that attractive, and sometimes it doesn't need to be. If you have a custom inventory package that you use internally, looks are going to take a back seat to speed and functionality, and that's fine, especially for an internally based system. Only a few employees are going to see it. But with the Web 2.0 movement, businesses are letting customers interact with data on their websites. They can place orders, request appointments, join message boards, engage in online chat, and so on. So static websites are transforming into interactive websites, and where websites used to be simple brochures on the web, they're really becoming sophisticated database applications. But unlike in the past, these database applications are outward facing. That is, it's not just employees using them anymore, customers are using them. And when you're dealing with customers, appearances matter. So as a database developer, you not only need to be concerned with how your applications function, you now also need to be concerned with how they look. Uh-oh, you might be thinking, I'm not really an artist. But the truth is, with just a little effort and a few tips, your Alpha 5 applications can look fantastic. And in this video, we'll show you how. The example we're going to use is a message board where people can register as well as read and upload comments and articles. This message board is for an organization called Natick Gourmet. Natick is a real town near Boston, Massachusetts, which until recently had the dubious honor of producing the world supply of Twinkie snack cakes. Today, where the factory stood is a high-end shopping mall, featuring quite a few high-end restaurants. And since the heyday of the Twinkie, tastes and foods have become far more sophisticated. So in our example, a fictitious organization started up called Natick Gourmet. And this is a site meant for the general public, so it needed to look good. We're going to take a look at the Natick Gourmet message board and see what it does and what it looks like. Then we're going to see how it was created, both functionally in terms of what it does, as well as style-wise. In other words, how and why did we get it to look the way it does? Let's take it from the top, starting with the header graphic. Here on the home page, the header graphic is both a design element and a functional element. It shows the title of the message board, but it also includes a place to log in. The login component was created using Alpha 5, while the graphic it sits on was created using PaintShop Pro. PaintShop Pro is an image editing software, similar to Photoshop. When I created this image, I left a space specifically for the login component here on the right. Let's spend a minute looking at the graphic. First, it's fairly simple. It's a rounded rectangle with a piece of clip art on the left. The rectangle sits on a gradient background. Another rectangle is then used to hold the login component. I made the graphic 800 pixels wide because I wanted the page to be 800 pixels wide. I think that's a fairly good width for most web browsers, but make the graphics any width you like. When the graphic is ready, I save it as a JPEG and then add the file to the web project's control panel so that I can publish it later. So now with the graphic complete, it's time to create a page to put it on. So in the Web Projects control panel, we choose New and then A5W page. You'll notice that I went right into the HTML, or Code View, instead of the Layout, or WYSIWYG view. And we'll be working on this Code View for most of the video. Because to control the exact look of our pages, we need to be able to edit the HTML tags ourselves. I'll explain each tag, though, as I use them. We'll start with the Image tag. This is an easy one. The format is like this. SRC for source equals, and then we put in the file name, header.jpg, and we set the width to 800, the height to 225, the border to 0, and we'll put in an alternate of Natick Gourmet. 
Now the width and height tags here are optional, but if you include them your page will load quicker and more smoothly because the browser will set aside a space for it when the image actually loads. The alt tag is also optional, but it can help your search engine ranking, so it's a good idea to include. Since search engines aren't good at looking at pictures and determining what they are, the alt tag gives them a clue. Now we'll save the page and name it index.a5w because we want it to be the first page that users see when they come to the site. How did I know that index.a5w is the first page that will open? Because that's how it's set up in the Application Server Settings dialog box, which I'll show you here. OK, I then went into Alpha 5 and created the login component. I wanted to keep the font size small so that it would fit in the area of the graphic I created for it. There were a few other changes I wanted to make too. Because space is tight, I don't want to display the Change Your Password link in this component. So it's inline style I set to display colon none. That's a bit of HTML that tells the web browser not to display this section. And you can use it elsewhere in Alpha 5 too. I also wanted to make the forget your password link smaller. I also wanted it right justified. And I wanted the font to be trebuchet since that's what's used elsewhere on the site. So I set those attributes here. For the inline styled, I used this HTML. Font family trebuchet ms font size 11 pixels and then for the style of the cell I used a top margin of zero and I set text align to right lastly to make the button right justified I chose right from the button alignment drop down box okay let's see how that looks that seems about the right size so let's publish this component and incorporate it into our home page so here we are back in the HTML editor, and this time we're going to insert a login component. To do that, we're going to have to switch over to WYSIWYG mode, since Alpha 5 doesn't let you insert components in the source field. But before we do this, let's mark this spot where we want the code inserted with a couple of X's. Now when we switch to WYSIWYG mode, we see our header graphic, and underneath we see a couple of X's. We'll highlight those X's, just so we have a target to insert the component. Then we'll choose Insert Component and select our Login Component. For the Page Background option, we'll choose Don't Set Page Background. And now our component is inserted, we'll see a couple of boxes, which are placeholders for the components. Now let's save and publish this and take a look at it in the browser. OK, now what's wrong with this picture? It turns out that the Login Component is below the graphic and not inside the box we set aside for it. But that's easy to fix with a little bit of HTML. So let's go back to the HTML editor and switch from WYSIWYG to source view. So this is what Alpha 5 inserted for our login component. And we want to shift it up and to the right. To do that we're going to enclose the component in div tags. So at the top we open the div and down here at the bottom we close the div. Now divs are kind of like placeholder tags and they're used for all kinds of reasons. In this case we're using it to position the component. So at the first div tag we're going to include a style attribute that reads like this. Style equals margin top negative 175 pixels margin left 610 pixels. This tells the browser to move the div section up 175 pixels and move it from the left over to the right 610 pixels. Now we save and publish and we go back to the browser and reload and that looks pretty good but I could always make additional edits to the margin if I wanted the component a little higher, lower, or more or less to the left. And that wraps it up for this video. I'm Dave McCormick. Thanks for watching.